lawyer, Laura, and her name will be repeated quite a lot over these next couple of days. <laughs> you got right, that Frank? right. Yeah, this system, uh, you know, it's, I'm going to explain why it's ever-changing and why this track is so difficult to nail down. I think, obviously, tomorrow, now that it's in the Gulf, it'll become a little more clear. So let's get to it, right? Okay. Uh, in the meantime, the uh, skies are nice tonight. It's fairly pleasant out there. Triangle Energy Camera has a dew point of 70. If you're at 70 or below, it's pretty comfortable. Winds are calm, but thanks to the leftovers from Marco, we're getting a bit of a northeast flow. So that's why it was fairly pleasant. You can see Galveston this afternoon, 85 degrees. Winds are calm there, 74 percent humidity. So again, the 10 p.m. advisory, 65 mile an hour winds. The storm is just off the coast of Cuba, continues to move northwest as a category one and then a category two hurricane making a landfall somewhere from Texas into Louisiana as we get into Wednesday night and early Thursday. And then it continues to wrap on around through the Tennessee Valley and the mid-Atlantic states around this high pressure and low pressure. We'll get to that in a moment. I do want to show you this. Uh, you've got some her tropical storm watches here in the blue and then uh, hurricane watches in the orange. And you can see those extend from Houston up through Conroe, Huntsville, the back through Kirbyville, and even to the Beaumont area. So we're still in this, certainly for the watches. I expect those will probably go to warnings by tomorrow afternoon because that just increases the time uh, or decreases the time of when we're going to see them. So the watches and warnings for the storm surge right now is all a watch. Now, clearly, if the storm goes into the Beaumont area, then the dirty side, the real push of most of the water, is going to be right through here in Louisiana, 7 to 11 feet. If it's more to the west, then we can switch this and we're going to get more than six feet. But here's the way it's breaking down right now from High Island to Louisiana to Vermilion Bay. Seven to 11 foot storm surge is a possibility for Bolivar Island for Peninsula rather four to six and for Galveston Island two to four and into the bay two to four. But those could certainly increase pretty easily. Let me show you why. Here's a look at the European future cast for winds. Now all of this wind flow is going to start pushing water Tuesday into Wednesday and then you get all of that water pushing toward the coast and even even if this system goes to the north, then you've got a backflow here. So if you get any kind of rain trying to drain into the bay, and this happened during Harvey, they can't drain because of that flow coming in off the north. So that could be problematic into the Galveston area as we get into later Wednesday, even if we don't get a direct strike. So we're going to have to watch for that potential. The future cast rainfall, speaking of that, follows the track right now, but you can see where that system makes a landfall could be in for 10, even 12 inches of rain. Widespread six to eight inches of rain will be fairly common. Now, I talked about the high and the low, and you can see this low. Look at this right here. See that spin right there? That's the low. This low over Texas may save us on this. This high pressure system is what's directing this, the storm off of Cuba. So there's the high and there's the low. To keep that in mind. So here's a look at the American future cast. This high moves to about Alabama, just to about Alabama, and that's why the system ends up in Louisiana, because it's not far enough to really push it over to Texas. The European, however, has been fairly consistent in putting this all the way through Alabama, almost to Mississippi, and that's why you have it into Sabine Pass. So it's just a, a hundred miles of where that high pressure would be, and so that storm would shift a little toward Texas as opposed to staying in Louisiana. So the American model puts Lake Charles really as the bullseye there. The European is right into Sabine Pass, and the RPM has shifted a little bit for us. That's the future cast that I showed you earlier tonight. I'm going to show you again, but there's the official Category 2 forecast. So if you follow this, earlier tonight, this was going right through Galveston County into downtown Houston. Now, the change for this has been that it's more right here in the Chambers High Island area and then moving to the north. So even that has shifted a little bit more toward Louisiana. So right now, things are favorable, and the game is on, and it has just started. So don't let your guard down at all. We're going to be on this all day tomorrow, of course, and we'll let you know as soon as we know what any to what, what changes, if any, occur. So the forecast is what it is. We'll wait for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to get by, and then we'll be the weekend.